log into my web server using SSH or Secure Shell. And here's where we actually talk a little bit more about what this all means. Okay, um, we already know how to log into our web server using FTP, don't we? And let's actually go ahead and review that. Let's go in there. Um, I'm going to, I'm just starting up CyberDuck and I'm going to go ahead and open a new connection. Uh, and my server is going to be robobunnyattack.com. My username, let's open up my important information document here so I can look up what my username is. My username for this test account that I set up was test user. So I'm going to pop that, whoops, what did I just do there? There we go. I'm going to pop that in here. All right. I'm going to pop this crazy password in here too. Let's go ahead and hit click connect. And we are logged in. Okay, we've logged into our web server. Here we go. We've got all the stuff logs, mail dirt, and there's our subdomain that we just created. That's fine. So what we're going to do is there's actually a different way uh, to connect to the web server. We can do this through Secure Shell. And this is kind of scary looking, but it's actually super, super cool. Um, and why is it cool? Because it's actually much faster to get things done. It's secure and it's also much, much faster. FTP is kind of gives you a nice graphical interface. Um, and for little things, it's actually easy to work with. Uh, but when it comes to doing some serious work, like installing lots of files or deleting lots of files or things like that, um, you really want to use the shell for that. Uh, it just makes things so much faster and so much easier. Um, so let me show you how to do that. Um, if you're on a Mac, the program that you need to connect using SSH, okay, is actually already built into your Mac. Let me show you how to find it. You need to go to your utilities folder, which in this case, um, oops, there we go. I need to be in the finder. I'm going to click on go and I'm just going to go straight to the utilities folder here. You can access that via the applications folder as well. Um, and what you're looking for is you're looking for a program called terminal. That's it right there, terminal. So I'm going to go ahead and start that. And uh, if you're doing a lot of web development, you probably will end up just putting terminal in your um, in your dock down here. So there we go. We've just opened up a new terminal window there. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And we're going to have these side by side, uh, or maybe down here. Yeah, how about that? That looks good. We're going to do this. Um, so we can kind of see. We're going to log in. This is us logged into our server via CyberDuck. Nice and pretty looking. And this is us logged into our server via terminal um, and the uh, SSH and uh, we're not actually logged in yet but let's go ahead and logged in. What we need to do is we need to type out this is just all text that we're going to type out there's no graphics here okay um, I know it's scary but it makes you feel cool it makes you feel like you know you really know what you're doing it's pretty cool. Um, we need to know a few commands and uh, I'm going to copy these commands in the show notes uh, so that you can cut and paste them. Um, but uh, for now, I'm just going to type them out. And the first command we're going to write is just SSH. OK, that's the command for, you know, accessing our web server via the secure shell. And we need to give some parameters. OK, we need to first of all give the username. And in our case, we know that our username is this test user. So I'm going to go ahead and carefully type that user 2012.07. OK, accuracy counts, folks. Make sure it's accurate. Then I'm going to put an at sign. OK, and then what I need to do is I need to write the domain name. OK, the server name. Uh, and in this case, it is robo bunny attack. Whoops, attack accuracy dot com. OK, this is very similar to what we did when we just clicked open connection, isn't it? You know, it asked us what was the server name, and we wrote down robobunnyattack.com. It asked us the username, and we put that in. Now, I'm just going to do this, and then I'm going to click on Enter. And if this is your first time logging in, then you're going to get, it's going to send you a message. It's going to say, the authenticity of host, blah, 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 can't be established. Okay, don't worry about that. Are you sure you want to continue connecting? Why, yes, we do. So we're going to type out yes, and we just hit Enter. And it says, all right, good, don't worry about the fact that it said warning. Yeah, it's OK, don't worry about it, OK? Now what it's asking you for, it's asking you for your password, OK? This is something I highly do not recommend that you try to type out. Instead, do the smart thing and copy this. So I'm just going to go ahead and click Copy, OK? Or Command-C, we'll do the same thing. And here's the thing, I'm going to paste it in here, right in here, and you are not going to see it in the terminal window. Okay, when you do this in your own terminal, it is not, you're not going to be able to see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and paste it using Command-B. 
and it has been pasted and then to enter it you click return and there we go we've logged in okay fantastic so we've actually logged in that's pretty awesome um, we are actually logged into the server it doesn't actually look like much but we're here right now what do you do once you're here okay um, well there's a few things we can do we can if we want to see all the files and folders that are on the server in fact if we want to see this stuff we can use the command ls and ls is just for list so I'm gonna go ahead and type ls and hit enter and you'll see that it returns three things mailder logs and test.robobunnyattack.com where have we seen this before why we've seen this right here and that's exactly what it's returning to us so this you can see that this is just a a text version of everything we're seeing here okay um what if we want to actually change directory what if we wanted to go inside this directory right here this folder um here it's simple right i just double click and then it just brings me up one level to this directory and now i'm in the test.robobunnyattack.com directory and i see these three files here what if i wanted to do this here i use the cd or change directory command and that's just cd space and then i just type the name of the directory that i want to go into so again be careful so let's go test dot robo bunny attack dot com and okay that's accurate i'm going to hit enter and okay it doesn't look like anything's happened but now if i actually do the ls command again hit enter now it shows us me three new files so this is where i'm at i'm in the test.robobunnyattack.com directory isn't that cool um, if you wanted to go back up one directory okay let's say i was like oh i don't want to be in this directory anymore i want to go back to the top directory i can go cd again change directory and then two periods and that just brings me backward and i'll hit ls again to see where i'm at there we go confirms that i'm actually back just like here okay um you might be asking yourself why in the world would i want to use this really horrible looking terminal window when i've got this beautiful cyber duck window right here okay uh, because in the next screencast we're going to do some really cool things we're going to use some commands that allow us to install things super super quickly and i mean i'm typing this stuff out really really carefully here to explain to you what the different commands do but at the end of the day what i'll honestly what i do is i just have some commands that i just end up cutting and pasting and i'll cut and paste like you know 10 lines of commands and cutting and pasting is great because when you cut and paste, you're much less likely to actually make mistakes. Um, here, it's actually easy. It's just, you know, a slip of the mouse, and you could accidentally put the wrong directory in the wrong place, and then everything's all screwed up here. If you've got commands, and you've double-checked them, and you know they work, you just cut and paste them, and it's going to work perfectly every single time. And you can install sites in a matter of seconds, you know, uh, versus, you know, minutes or hours here. And uh, when you're doing a lot of installations, this makes life a lot simpler one last thing I shouldn't have skipped over this I actually just went ahead and said if you've got a Mac you use terminal what if you've got a PC um, fear not PC users you can absolutely do this yourselves as well too unfortunately there's no built-in terminal or shell emulator in the in, in on a PC what you need to do is you need to install a piece of software to do that for you I recommend that you install putty Putty is uh, an SSH and Telnet client, and it is specifically for the Windows platform, and you can just download it right here. You just go to putty.org, and you can download this free SSH client, and uh, I highly recommend it, and that will allow you to do what we are doing right here. Okay? That's all I have for now. I hope that that was helpful. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.